YouTube guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Eugene Schrader from Polygon Motion and in this cool tutorial we will explode and tear and sphere in Cinema 4D. I've seen this type of simulation in a lots of motion graphics scene and I decided to create a new chart class on a scale share about this technique. Using this simulation create a nice look in your motion graphic project and I'm using Cinema 4D R16 is steady version. It's very important to have a steady version because in other versions you can't find cloud simulation for example in primitive, in broadcast, in light version there is no cloud simulation facts inside of Cinema 4D and you have to use a static. You can download Cinema 4D trial version in maxon.com websites. Okay, let's set up our project and the first setup being I'm just going to render setup and adjust my resolution. For resolution I'm just using HDTV 25 and for aspect ratio I want uh, aspect ratio of uh, custom and also it's my favorite preset. You can change anything you want. You can do a lot of other resolution if you want. And also, okay, let's talk about cloud simulation inside of Cinema 4D. To create cloud simulation in Cinema 4D, you need an editable object. For example, let's create an, our, our object. For example, plane. We need a sphere. Put it in above of this ground and make this a little bit bigger than a sphere. And also, in a sphere, I'm just using... 15, 50, sorry, segments for that and go to display ground shading. Now you see that these objects are in primitive mode and when you have objects with primitive mode, you can't apply cloud simulation and cloud tag inside of Cinema 4D. Okay, you can find cloud tags when you right click on your object in simulation tags Below of these rigid bodies and soft bodies, there is three facts that uh, that is related to clot. The first one is clot belt, clot collider, and clot. I'm not going through each one of them, but I'm just talking about clot belt. When you apply clot belt, you can just fix a map for influence of your clot, and you can apply some points to to stack your clot in the uh, points that you selected. It's very complicated. I'm not going through cloth build. You can find other tutorials for cloth build. Maybe I have uh, some other tutorials in the future on a scale share, but I'm just talking about cloth collider. Cloth collider is, is the tag that means that when you add this tag to your object, when you add cloth collider to an object, it means that your cloth object, your main cloth object is collide with other object in the ground. For example, ground, it's hit the ground and it must be interact with the ground. And for the ground, we have to use cloth collider because this sphere is collide and interact with this ground. In this case, we have to add a tag of cloth the main cloud in here simulation uh, to our sphere because when you add a cloud to your main object it means that your main object is the tag of cloud and it's react and deform by the uh, for example force that you add and other staffs in your Cinema 4D uh, project. Okay and to add simulation tag you need to change this primitive to the editable and for this I'm just selecting my object and press C on the keyboard and it's now uh, change to editable object and I can change for example points in here I can change the faces and also polygons in your object and also you can right click and choose make editable and uh, now you can adjust different parameters different things in our sphere object okay I'm just duplicate this sphere object uh, hold control and drag and it's our uh, inner sphere rename this inner sphere it's the sphere that is inside of this cloud simulation and let's drag it down a little bit and also let's change the color of it okay for color I'm just on and use a white color for this and also all the thing is set up for creating a cloud simulation create our cloud simulation and tears cloud we need to modify some segments in our uh, sphere for this I'm just isolate off this inner one and select our sphere this sphere and go to faces in here and right click choose knife and what knife does is create a kind of cuts between these segments and uh, when we have cuts in these segments in the sphere it makes our sphere uh, tear 
uh, with the clots and it's create a tear look for this. Okay, let's uh, drag in here and also just draw random lines and click drag in this side and also make a lot of random. It looks so fancy but it will work while we apply our clot tags and do a bunch of other things. You see that how helpful it is to create this kind of things and maybe a little bit in here in the sides and also create some fears. And also, it's very nice. Yeah, now it's good. And uh, let's select them, select that, and off this. And uh, I need a clot surface because clot surface is a subdivision surface. And if you don't apply this, you can take any good result from a sphere and drag this into clot sphere. And let's go to uh, display and ground shading off. For ground, I'm just using simulation clot collider because this sphere is collide interact with this ground also for inner sphere i'm just using uh, simulation clot collider as well because this clot is also uh, interact with this inner sphere also and for a sphere itself i'm just using clot okay let's add uh forces for example i'm just using uh, attractor and put it above and go to our clot in here and in forces the first thing that i want to do is zero down the gravity and we don't want gravity because if it's gravity if gravity is on but later uh, we'll just animate this gravity to achieve a good result and also in tag i have something in here just use tier checkbox and if you want tiers you have to check on this use tier otherwise you can get the tier options in here and in here you can just um, adjust the, the value of your tier how much tier you want for your object for example i'm just changing this to 150 and also the other things that i want to do is go to attractor in objects and just increase the strength of that maybe 750 and also in fall off go to uh, fall off and choose a sphere and uh, go to other viewport and also scale it down and put it in this area because our uh, segments and our knife our cats in segment are really are exist in this area and we want to have explosion we want to start our explosion from this area and once you done this, go to your cloud and in expert mode, drag your attractor to cloud to have some interaction with, with, with your cloud. Otherwise, this attractor is not affected to your cloud. Okay. If I hit the play button, you see that I have a very nice explosion in here. And uh, it's very good. But the main thing that we want to do is just adjust the gravity and keyframe the gravity. For example, in this area, in these areas, we don't want gravity, we just want to stack these explosion. But in this area, we, we want this cloud to fall off in the ground and hit to the ground. Okay, for this, I'm just going to cloud and in forces, let's create a, a key for this, for cloud animation and add a keyframe. Maybe in this area and go to this frame and go to clot. Make this minus 90.02. And now, if I hit the play button, you see that when it's come in this area, the gravity is affected to this clot and this clot is falling down to the ground. And it makes our project very, very realistic and very, very nice. You see that it's completely react with this uh, ground because we add a clot collider in this plane. And also it's collide with uh, this other sphere in here and it makes very nice effect.
We don't want to adjust some other parameters in Claude. If you want, you can do a bunch of other parameters. For example, you can adjust the bounciness of this clod, how much bounciness you want. You can adjust the friction and also flexibility. Maybe a little bit rubberness to that, maybe 15. And now let's take a look. Yeah, it's very nice. And also the other things that I want to do is cache this simulation file, this simulation, because you see that when I hit the play button, it's very, very slow. And if you don't want to re-simulate again and again, uh, when you set up your simulation, you have to cache it out to have a faster playback option. For this, I'm just going to close and in cache, use this calculate cache and, and wait until this cache process was done. And uh, uh, Our uh, cache file is uh, completed and uh, make sure that this cache mode is on. And when I play this simulation, you see that how much fast is there. And uh, it's very nice. It makes our project very, very easy to grab into different frames and it's very useful. You can save your uh, cache file also whenever you just changing the project destination. You can load the uh, cache file also. Okay. The other things that I want to do is uh, make a little bit thickness for that. You see that it's very completely flat and that the real cloud is not flat like this. And for this, I'm just going to cloud surface and a little bit subdivision and also in thickness, a little bit thickness is very nice for this. And maybe this match is good. Okay, let's add some materials and polish this simulation to look very nice. Okay, for this, the first thing I, that I want to do is create a background. For background, I'm just creating new material and I want a white color for background and also uh, add this to plain. And we want to create an infinite background. And uh, when I hit the uh, render button, you see that this cell, uh, this ground is appearing here. And we don't want to see this ground. We just want to see the shadows that we will achieve later on when we add some lights. And uh, for this, I'm just going to setting and in effect, I add uh, ambient occlusion and also global elimination for realistic result. And in Iridium cache file, I'm just change this to uh, low. And also, you see that it's completely black, but we will fix that. Let's add some uh, material for our sphere. For cloth, I'm just using a gray type material in here. And also, maybe a little bit of reflection for that. Lower down the reflection and... Uh, Maybe just add a Fresnel for that and grab it to this sphere. And also for our inner sphere, I want to use a different colors to a kind of differentiate between uh, these clots and uh, this inner uh, surface. Okay, for this, I'm just using a red color and also a little bit of reflectivity. This match and go to here and Fresnel, maybe a little bit adjustment of uh, specular, find a strength like this and grab it to this inner sphere. Okay, once you grab it, we have to change this color to off to see our exact same materials. And when I hit the render button, you see that it's completely black. We need some lights in here, area lights, and just create at the top of that and Rotate it 19 degrees and let's adjust it in from different viewport and scale it up and put it in this area and go to light, add a uh, area shadows and also duplicate this light and uh, put it in this side, this side and maybe zero down this and just 19 degrees or maybe zero down this, just 19 degrees in this axis and also it is good, maybe a little bit
put it in this side, in the left hand side, and to uh, lighting up our scene and create a beautiful result. Okay, let's uh, add another copy of that and put it in this direction. Maybe put this in this direction to have some fill light in here, in the this area. Also, let's create our HDRI reflection map. Maybe lower down these intensity and it's a little bit higher. For our reflection map, we add we have to add in the sky and for the sky, I'm just creating a new material of the reflectivity. Go to luminance and add a HDRI map that available for download and you can download it from uh, the class project area. Let's add this and put it in the sky and uh, let's hit the render button to see how it's look. Okay, you see it's very nice and the reflection of our environment is very good and very nice and also all the thing is set up but just we don't want to see this uh, environment, we just want to see a white background with some shadows. I'm just using some techniques for compositing. Go to Sky and add some uh, an, a compositing tag, and let's uncheck this scene by camera. It's it's already affected, but we don't see it on our background. And also the other things that I want to do is go to Plane and add a compositing tag. And for compositing tag, I'm just composite this with my background. And when I hit the render button, or maybe just this area, you see that. There is no plane, there is no thing, it's just an infinite uh, background, an infinite ground that looks very nice, very good. Okay, uh, let's uh, create another camera for that and uh, put into camera mode and adjust it in this side. And okay, our scene is completed and you have all the things set up. And for rendering option, let's toggle down some rendering options. In output, you, you can just adjust your uh, resolution and your frame. And for animation, you have to change this to all frames uh, for animation. And uh, for steel frames, you just need to uh, change this to current frame. And also in save, you have to define where you want to save. If you have some compositing works and compositing tasks that you want to do it, for example, in Nuke or uh, other compositing softwares like After Effects, you can just uh, define the location of your multipass in here. But we don't want to use multipass. We just want to use our regular image. And for a regular image, you have to define your file location here. And also uh, you have to formats, for example, maybe PNG is good for this. And also your color per channel and in here you you can adjust your compositing project file and also if you want some uh, project files that are come with this project if you want if you hit the render you can just save the after effect project file in here and also after effect with other softwares okay guys hope you enjoy from this tutorial and don't forget to check out polygonmotions.com for new tutorials and new classes uh, about motion graphic and graphic design and my name is Ujushade from Polygon Motion. We'll see you next time.